I help others, but I need to help protect myself. Honestly, I couldn't afford to get sick. I want to be there for this one. I can't if I'm sick. Pneumococcal pneumonia is a potentially serious bacterial lung disease. You may be at risk if you're 19 to 64 with certain chronic conditions or if you're 65 or older. Don't pause a moment longer. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about getting vaccinated against pneumococcal pneumonia today. Bonjour. They're back. Jennifer Aniston and Adam Sandler's Murder Mystery 2 streams next Friday on Netflix. But before that, I'm Jen Aniston. What's happening now? DPS investigating a shooting happening right here at the Double Tree Hotel in downtown. What we know so far up next. Police cite and release is going to be on the May ballot for misdemeanor pot possession, but that is also the case for the crime of theft. Why that's got some police union members as well as business owners concerned about Prop A. This weekend's forecast is looking absolutely fantastic here in South Central Texas with low humidity, especially on Saturday. But a few isolated rain chances are just around the corner. We'll time it out in a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. First at five, we broke the story at 1230 on the news at noon. Now we know what happened at a downtown hotel that left a man dead and federal agents swarming the scene. This near the Double Tree Hotel in the 500 block of West Cesar Chavez near UTSA's downtown campus. And that's where we find our Jonathan Cotto has been staying on top of this story all day. Jonathan joins us now live. Jonathan, I know it's been a busy scene out there. What do we know about the person who was shot and killed? Well, we are learning that person was a 46 year old man from New Braunfels wanted for assault with an ag uh, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Now, the U.S. Marshals Task Force was looking for this person. They had received information that uh, indicated that that suspect was located here at the Double Tree Hotel in downtown. Now, we spoke to a task force supervisor with the U.S. Marshals who says once they confirmed he was located at this hotel, they were able to send out units who arrived here around 1130 or 12 in an effort of making an arrest. We spoke with DPS. This is what they had to say. Officers encountered the subject when an officer involved shooting occurred. The subject was pronounced deceased on scene. At the request of the U.S. Marshals Task Force, the Texas Department of Public Safety, Texas Rangers Division is assisting with the investigation. Now, DPS says hotel guests were free to come and leave while the scene was active. They were not clear if any of the hotel guests were in any danger at any time. Now, we are just learning that the Texas Rangers have officially taken over this investigation. Officers were not clear about the details of this shooting and were not able to provide information as to why they shot and killed the suspect. Now, the suspect's identity remains uh, to be determined as uh, they are pending notification of next again. Reporting live from downtown, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. More details to come on that one. San Antonio's Proposition A will be on the May ballot. It's mostly aimed at decriminalizing marijuana and abortion, but opponents are keying in on something else that may hit businesses in the pocketbook. The police union and business community focusing on what could happen if the city's site and release program is expanded under this ballot proposition. While crimes like theft up to $750 and criminal mischief are already part of site and release, it's an option for officers to cite instead of arrest. Whereas with Prop A, it would largely be mandated. Discretion is a tool of the trade that gives the officers the right to either take a person to jail or if it's easier, issue the citation and then we file that later. This is taking that discretion away uh, to where we can't dictate that any longer. It'll be dictated by this justice charter. Supporters, though, say cite and release gives people a chance to keep charges like this off their records. And even if someone is cited rather than arrested, the DA's office gets to decide whether to keep them in the diversion track or whether to prosecute them like they do now. More on that story coming up at six. And if you want to see a sample ballot for the May election, you can go ahead and scan the QR code on your screen. It'll populate a link to click on right from your phone, and that will take you to our website where we have an article covering what's on the ballot. You can even see the ballot itself. If you don't have your phone nearby to scan this QR code, you can easily find the article later 
using the KSAT News app or on KSAT.com. Even more disturbing details are coming to light about an 18 year old picked up yesterday for suspiciously circling Southwest High School. He's now confessed to two attempted kidnappings and more. 18 year old Jorge Ruedas Rivera is behind bars and revealing a troubling string of assaults in downtown hotels. Rivera is currently charged with two attempted abductions that happened between the 17th and the 23rd. According to the affidavit, one happened on the southwest side and involved a 12 year old girl who he tried to pull into his car. Another involved a woman who scratched Rivera during her attack and got some of his DNA under her fingernails. But in two more incidents, the victims claimed that Rivera grabbed them inappropriately. And in another case, the victim says he threatened her life if she didn't comply. He was picked up when a caller to PD gave his license plate number. Initially, police say Rivera denied involvement, but then he told officers he was hearing voices in his head from extraterrestrials. He said they were telling him to, quote, do things. More than four years after the Bear County Sheriff's Office canine Chucky was killed in the line of duty, punishment finally handed down to the man who killed him. Matthew Morales getting a life sentence today. He was convicted in December of interfering with police service animal, evading arrest, and eight counts of aggravated assault of a public servant. This was part of the fallout that came from a chase in January of 2019 that started in Carnes County. Yeah, Morales refused to pull over for a routine traffic stop and drove to Bear County where he tried to escape on foot then fired several shots towards deputies, ultimately killed Chucky, that canine who had been deployed to try and subdue him. Several members of the Bear County Sheriff's Office testifying about Morales' background, including how he is a member of the Mexican Mafia. He was wanted for murder in Miami, was found here in San Antonio. This is 25-year-old Damian Colasso. He's charged with second-degree murder in connection to his brother's death. 28-year-old Cologne was shot and killed during a fight with Colosso in March of last year. It's unclear why Colosso was in San Antonio. Right now, he's awaiting extradition back to the state of Florida. Canada's border has been heating up for months, but it's now the subject of a new immigration deal with the U.S. It allows Canada to send asylum seekers back to the U.S. if they've crossed into Canada from the U.S. As ABC's Lindsay Watts explains, this is an update to a 20-year agreement between the two countries that Canada has been pushing for for a very long time. President Biden in Ottawa for his first presidential visit to Canada. It's an honor to be here. We have a lot to talk about. Topics on the table for Biden and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau include upgrades to NORAD in light of the Chinese spy balloon that entered both countries, the war in Ukraine, and migration. Biden and Trudeau announcing they've struck a new agreement that will close a loophole in existing rules on asylum seekers. The United States and Canada will work together to discourage unlawful border crossings and fully implement and the updated safe third country agreement. The deal allows Canada to send more people seeking asylum back to the U.S. Currently, if someone crosses from America into Canada seeking asylum, Canada can send that person back to the U.S., but only if the person crosses at an official port of entry. The same rules apply for those crossing from Canada into the U.S. The problem for Canada, more and more people have been entering the country from unofficial crossings, primarily this rural road in New York State that connects with Quebec. 40,000 people crossed at these unofficial places last year, a major spike. The hope is the New Deal will cut that down. Canada has long been pushing for the change. In return, the country will allow 15,000 more people to legally migrate to Canada, including those fleeing violence in South and Central America. This new agreement is taking effect almost immediately at 12.01 a.m. Saturday. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. Actors, politicians, even students from San Antonio St. Mary's University have been trying to get him out of a Rwandan jail. Today it was announced that Paul Rusesa Bagina will be freed. Rusesa Bagina's life inspired the film Hotel Rwanda. His family has called San Antonio home. 
He's been in jail for three years after his family says he was unfairly arrested while on an overseas trip, then jailed and convicted in a Rwandan court on terrorism charges. His family advocates, even the U.S. government, have called those charges unfair. His family believes he was punished for being a critic of Rwanda's government and their human rights abuses. It's been rumored that Recessa Bagina was in poor health. Today, the Rwandan government announced his sentence had been commuted. His family releasing a statement saying, quote, we are pleased to hear the news about Paul's release. The family is hopeful to reunite with him soon, end quote. Recessa Bagina saved more than a thousand people from genocide in Rwanda. His life inspired the movie Hotel Rwanda. He and his family would later flee Rwanda and live in exile in San Antonio. He also received the Presidential Medal of Freedom for President George W. Bush in 2005. He is expected to eventually return to Texas. Taking a look outside with your traffic authority cameras. And here we are at 410 in Marbach. And you certainly can tell a lot of people left work perhaps a little bit early today to enjoy a bit of this gorgeous weather we're having here, Mia. Yes, absolutely beautiful. No issues out on the roadway weather wise, except for maybe some high profile vehicles. It is still a little breezy out there this hour. We've seen some wind gusts generally upwards of about 30 miles per hour. But other than that, the sunshine has been the big story this afternoon. After you started off this morning on the muggy side with some cloud cover, we saw that weak cold front move through. It did bring back the blue skies, but that drier air that moved in with it really helping those temperatures crank up yet again. 86 over an Eagle Pass, 87 in Leon Springs, a little bit closer to Bear County, 85 in Windcrest, 88 in New Braunfels, and 86 over in Bulverde. So a warmer than average way to wrap up the work week. If you're stepping out for any of those Friday evening plans, still a little breezy, but that drier air is going to make it feel very comfortable out there. 84 by 7 p.m. And then those temperatures will be able to fall pretty efficiently through the nighttime hours in the mid 70s by 9 and into the upper 60s by 11 p.m. Now, of course, this all thanks to that front that moved through this morning. Thankfully, didn't bring much in the way of severe weather to our area. That is a much different story for our friends up to the northeast. ABC's Rena Roy explains what folks from northeast Texas to the Ohio River Valley are bracing for tonight. Nearly 30 million Americans are on alert for tornadoes, damaging winds, flash flooding, and large hail. Weather officials warning intense long track tornadoes could touch down in parts of the south and could be as strong as EF3 or even higher, meaning winds at least 135 miles per hour. As this storm pattern moves toward the east, these tornadoes are likely to fire up today. Could be EF3 plus. SBC wants everybody in Jackson, Shreveport, Greenville, Memphis to be on alert for this and when those alerts and sirens go off, take cover today. These are likely going to be tough. Heavy rain already hitting Indianapolis and in Poolville, Texas, the roof of this church damaged its steeple on the ground, down trees across the area. People in California still picking up the pieces from back to back storms. It was very scary. The wind was insane. Trees were swaying everywhere. Ton of water. Some in the Bay Area still without power. In Fresno, thousands of acres of agricultural land now several feet underwater, affecting farmers and ranchers. And this flooding could be around for a while. All I can say is, wow, you know, this is this weather event is just something that you don't see very often. This isn't a two week event. Um, this event will last through the summer, most likely into around September. The same storm hitting the south will also bring snow from Iowa to Michigan before moving into the northeast with rain, high winds and chilly conditions this weekend. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. All right, let's talk credit cards. If used correctly, they can come with a bunch of perks. But how do you find the right rewards program? Marilyn Moore shows you what to consider when it comes to your own spending habits that could put money back in your pocket. We've got some important breaking news happening near New Valde. The New Valde Police Department has closed off Highway 90 near FM 2730. This is east of Canipa. Yeah, to give you an idea, Canipa is between Sabinal and Uvalde. They say numerous migrants were found injured inside a train car there. We do not know the extent of those injuries. We're working to learn more information. We have a crew on the way right now. Of course, we'll bring you updates as we learn more. Again, numerous migrants found injured in a train car near Canipa. Highway 90 East at FM 2730 closed. We'll have the very latest coming up 
certainly by six o'clock. Also coming up tonight at six, quick thinking may have saved lives. A man with a loaded weapon stood outside of a West Side Elementary School yesterday. No one hurt thanks to the actions of one Edgewood ISD parent who officers are calling a hero. Camelia Juarez has that story at six. Plus, it's a big weekend for this San Antonio couple. How they're reliving the historic march they went on with Cesar Chavez more than 50 years ago. Jesse De Goyado has their story at six. Now to your money or make that your credit cards with prices high on just about everything. The cash back you can get by using credit cards could be a big help. But that's only if you redeem them. 12 Your Size Marilyn Moritz takes a look at getting the most out of your credit card rewards. Credit card rewards. You buy groceries, pump gas, dine out, and you get cash back. That's how credit card companies compete. But are you even claiming your perks? A creditcards.com study revealed nearly a quarter of people say no, not lately, leaving money on the table. Now, you don't want to be a points millionaire. It's important to earn and burn these points strategically. Industry analyst Ted Rossman says rewards can lose value to inflation, or maybe the card company changes the rules. So how do you know which type of reward card is best for you? Know thyself, you know, pick cards that lean into your key spending categories, and think about how much complexity you're willing to take on. He says travel cards are more lucrative, but more complicated. Some cards rotate categories. Some offer bigger percentages back, but with caveats. If you want to keep it really simple, just get 2% on everything. In a year, he estimates the average household can get five or $600 back. But put this in big red letters. This only makes sense if you pay your full balance every month, because interest rates are sky high. In other words, we don't want you to pay 20% interest just to get one or two or even five or six percent in cash back or airline miles. If you do carry a balance, and a lot of people do, he says your priority shouldn't be rewards, but paying down debt. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Live cam blue skies. This picture tells the story, doesn't it, weatherwise? Look of at course. that. Of course. It's Gorgeous. beautiful out there. And spoiler alert, if you like the sunshine, you're really going to like tomorrow because we are going to see plenty of it. Yeah, this morning it was another muggy start to the day, had some patchy fog. The humidity was still with us, but then we saw that front move in through the mid morning hours here in San Antonio. We were able to find a few showers out there as it pushed through. And then on the back side of that boundary, Drier air is punching in and it has left us with views like that. Beautiful blue skies right off the bat. Let's get you to that weekend forecast. Some cooler mornings in the works, slow to mid fifties Saturday and into Sunday tomorrow. Yes, more blue skies, low humidity. It's going to feel very comfortable out there with a the high around 83 here in town into the back half of the weekend. Temperatures are pretty similar, but what we're going to find is a touch more moisture that's going to start working its way back into South Central Texas. That's going to allow a few more clouds to float across the south central Texas sky and sure, maybe a stray shower, not completely out of the question, especially the farther east that you go. Right now, the opposite story, of course, clear skies and with that dry air that's moved in behind the front, temperatures have been able to crank up this Friday afternoon, 88 degrees. The current temperature over at the airport, a degree warmer, just up I-35 in New Braunfels, Gonzales is checking in at 85. It's 91 down in Pleasanton over in Atascosa County. There's where that front currently sits. You can see that severe weather threat that we were talking about earlier in the newscast. That is well off to our northeast here this Friday afternoon as well. Back here at home, dew points, how we measure that low level moisture, much lower than where we were this time yesterday. So because that drier air is in place, temperatures will be able to cool down a bit more efficiently through the overnight hours. We're waking up to a cooler morning first thing Saturday in the low 50s for most around 52 here in San Antonio around 60 by 9 a.m. Plenty of sunshine 75 through the lunchtime hour and then those daytime highs do look to top off in the low 80s. More of the same into Sunday into Monday. We're expecting our next front to move in and as it does so it could potentially spark a few isolated to maybe widely scattered showers into Monday as well and then 
after that, a few more daily chances for some isolated rain. Not completely out of the question. You can see after that next front does move through those afternoon highs a little bit cooler, topping off in the low 70s early next week, guys. Sounds good, Mia. Thank you. All right, let's turn to the Spurs right now. Can they get it together in D.C.? Well, they certainly want to get it together. Yeah. I mean, they have, what, nine games, I think, left in the regular season. They want to finish out strongly. Speaking of finishing it out strongly, Keita Bates-Diop certainly wants to because he is playing on an expiring contract. So he wants to show teams what he can do. And in men's college basketball, both UT and Houston will play Sweet 16 games tonight. Coming up. Spurs are coming off back-to-back -back blowout losses to the Pelicans and Bucks. Tonight, they'll test their skills on the road at the Washington Wizards. With only nine games left, the season is coming to an end. And for players on expiring deals like Kata Bates D up, they're looking for their next contract. KBD has had a career year posting highs in points, assists, and minutes. After the Bucks game, he was asked if he thinks he's opened some eyes to what he can bring to a team. I hope so. I would think so. Um... You know, that's great and all. I'm just looking to kind of help out, help out the young guys best I can, finish out this season strong, whatever happens, happens. Spurs Wizards tonight. It's an early tip, 6 p.m. local time. Jeremy Sohan is out with right knee soreness. In men's college basketball, Texas and Xavier will face off in the Sweet 16 tonight. Texas is the two seed in the Midwest region, while the Musketeers are number three. This will be the fourth postseason meeting between the two. Texas has won six straight games, including the Big 12 championship in Kansas City two weeks ago, the site of tonight's game. It feels good to be back. You know, we, we have good memories here and good energy within this gym with certain guys playing well. And just the familiarity with the area and with the gym is just something that's going to make us more comfortable through, through uh, this next game. We have some good memories playing in this arena. And, you know, we're definitely looking to carry that, you know, that comfortability, that confidence over into this weekend as well. Staying in the Midwest region, number one Houston and number five Miami will play tonight with a berth in the Elite Eight at stake. This will be a classic matchup of offense versus defense. The Cougars have the third ranked defense in the nation, while Miami's offense comes in at number 25. The guy in the middle, just a beast in the paint, offensive rebounder. So, you know, they all have their strengths and they really know how to play to them. So that's what makes it really, really hard. You know, I think that just makes it uh, ten times better of a matchup. You know, we're, we're supposed to, supposedly supposed to be one of the best defensive teams in the nation, and they are one of the best offensive teams in the nation. So uh, it, it's, it's trying to tell us to step up to the challenge a little bit. Always about stepping up to the challenge. Number five, Miami. and Number one, Houston will play at 6.15 tonight. Number three, Xavier. Number two, Texas will tip off at 8.45 p.m. Houston and Texas could face each other in the Elite Eight if they can both win tonight. What a matchup that would be. That would be insane for the state of Texas. Yeah. Don't count it, though. Nope. We're in, nope. Not yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll be right back. We are still working to get you some more information on our breaking news near Uvalde. The Uvalde Police Department closing off Highway 90. This is happening east of Kadnipa, which is in between Uvalde and Savinal. Yeah, numerous migrants found injured in train cars. We do know that medical helicopters are on the scene as well. We have a crew on the way. Of course, have the very latest coming up at 6. Thanks for joining us.